A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you. And I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know, or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. The woods around the house have always been uncomfortably silent. As if they're about to say something but never do. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. power had been turned off the night we left. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. Or how only one restaurant would deliver to our house. So we had Chinese a lot. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it. 
like a smile with too many teeth. Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house, after it sank. Great-Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. My mom wasn't much of an optimist, but she never stopped believing that my brother Milton was alive. Edie told me once that every finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with, if she hadn't died in 1947. As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. Hmm. My grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Barbara was a child star for two years, until America grew out of it. <sighs> Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. Just like I had no idea where all this 
was going to lead. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. Molly's gerbil had a tiny bedroom with its own even tinier gerbil cage. Being inside for the first time, I felt like I'd stepped behind a painting. I got the sense Edie had spent a lot of time here. December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. My Halloween candy was all gone. I kept eating and eating. I ate a lot of things that night. Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. And suddenly, I was a cat. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. Mom and Dad didn't even look at me. I could tell she was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. I gobbled her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. Mama 
Grab it. too big to carry. I started choking, but I couldn't stop eating. And suddenly, I was a shark. off a cliff and into the ocean. Now, I was hungrier than ever. I wanted fat, juicy seals. I tore off her flipper and it tasted really good. Everything had changed. Now I was a monster and I smelled people everywhere. smell went into an old pipe. I got closer and closer.
all my stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be, and we both know I will be delicious.